So this is a video I've been wanting to make for a bit now. It's been on my mind for a few months, and it's just now that the list has been merciful enough to give me a period of time to cover some of the gems that have released this year, like Everything Everywhere All at Once, and this movie. I am Amleth the Bad Wolf, son of King Arvon the War Raven, and I am his vengeance! Yep, The Northman, a movie that really doesn't need any introduction as it has easily won over most people that's watched it. I'm not even kidding, it's probably the best movie of the year, period. I really liked Everything Everywhere, Top Gun was buckets of fun, but Northman is just flat out better. This has easily become not just one of the better movies I've seen in a long time, it's outright one of my favorite movies ever now. But before we get started, I kid you not. I actually managed to get a sponsor. You what? And you'll never guess who it is. Yeah, it's Raid Shadow Legends. <laughs> the guys over at Raid Shadow Legends were kind enough to offer a sponsorship for this video. Do you like video games? Do you like fantasy stuff? Do you want to avenge your father's murder and fall in love with a Slavic cutie? Well, you'll never be able to put the heads of your enemies on pikes or lick the feet of a 10 out of 10 Russian waifu. You can watch TV and fight tons of awesome dragons and undead enemies and the hottest mobile game out there. You know, that's not a gacha game. This is kind of a gacha game, though. But the content that I'm most excited about is the Doom Tower, and I really want to talk to you guys about it for a bit. The Arbiter fought a bunch of legendary opponents, but wasn't strong enough to take them out permanently. So instead, she locked them up in a massive super tower, trying to figure out a way to kill them. Now, all those monsters she could just barely fight off are trying to escape, and it's up to you and your team of heroes to kill them all before they can wreak havoc, which means a ton of difficult quests, but with a mountain of loot waiting for you at the end. There are bosses like the Scarab King. Dude barely takes any damage and needs specific debuffs in order to be on equal level with him, and if you aren't careful, he's absolutely merciless. He's just one of many bosses that demand you take your time and optimize your heroes as far as they can go. You can take things a step further with the new feature, Awakening. Awakening your champion lets you choose a powerful blessing, meaning you can turn these dudes into absolute powerhouses. Awakening can also completely change the role of your hero, allowing for even more customization of your team. So many different combinations to try out, and all thanks to this new feature. You even get new visual effects to keep things exciting to look at during fights. And you'll need it for a brand new dungeon, the Iron Twins. It is a scary place to be if you're not careful. A whole new layer of strategy and a new place to test things out. It's the best of both worlds. And a new legendary version of the hero Death Knight just released, Ultimate Death Knight. The guy kind of looks like a renaissance version of Skull Knight. It's kind of sick. Just log in and play Raid for 7 days between now and October 27th. There's never been a better time to jump in and get started. You can use the promo code code DK Rises or a whole bunch of really cool stuff and level up your favorite champions all the way to level 50 and ascend them to 5 star. And this works for new and existing players. If you haven't played Raid and want to give it a shot, click my link in the description or scan the QR code here. The bonuses offered here are up to 30 bucks. You also get the free champion Ina, 200k in silver, an energy refill, an XP boost, and an ancient shard. There's a lot they're willing to give new players and their fans. These guys are something else, so give them some love. Now back to the video. The Northman is the action historical fantasy epic directed by Robert Eggers and starring Alexander Skarsgård, Anya Taylor-Joy, Nicole Kidman, and Clyce Bang. You also have appearances by Ethan Hawke and Willem Dafoe, but they're in smaller roles. The story follows our protagonist Omleth, the son to the king of Hrofni, Avendil the War Raven. Well, after the king's brother Fjolnir murders him, conquers his kingdom, and steals his wife, Omleth is forced to flee his childhood home to avoid death, growing up to be a ferocious warrior obsessed with vengeance against the man who wronged him. Now, the story of Northman is not the most original thing on the planet. It's a revenge story first and foremost, but you might be feeling something even more familiar about the film. Almost a Shakespeare vibe. It sort of sounds like the plot of Hamlet, or if you're a Zoomer, The Lion King, and that's because the Northman is based off the legend that inspired Hamlet. Omleth is an actual figure in Scandinavian folklore. Obviously, Shakespeare changed details for the sake of adapting fiction, such as having Hamlet take place in Denmark, but the story existed before he got his hands on it. That's an interesting detail for sure, but let me give some context on who exactly Robert Eggers is and why he's such a good filmmaker. By the way, this video has like zero objectivity. I love this dude's movies, so you're gonna hear me gush like crazy about them. Robert Eggers 
Eggers is a very prolific director. The guy is a clear visionary, able to take very unconventional concepts and sell them to a general audience. His first movie, The Witch, takes place during the Pilgrim era of America, and focuses on a family terrorized by witches and Satan himself. The Lighthouse is a psychological horror comedy about two men in the early 20th century trapped on a small lighthouse island together, who end up just completely losing their fucking minds. And now, The Northman an action movie about Scandinavian culture. The interesting thing about Eggers is his clear love and respect of folklore. In each of his movies, the stories and legends that are prominent in each culture are completely true, and they have actual consequences in the stories. The Witch makes it very obvious that the black magic and presence of the devil is real. The Lighthouse is more subtle, and it plays with the idea that maybe the protagonists are just going crazy, but there are hints that the stories and curses that Willem Dafoe's character warns about are true. I seen you sparring with a gull. Best leave him be. Bad luck to kill a seabird. More tall tales. Bad luck to kill a seabird! And the Northman is even more blatant about it, outright establishing that the gods and Nordic mysticism are real, and are directly involved in the main story, but I'll talk about that later towards the end. For now, I'm actually going to go ahead and talk about the actual technicals of the film, which is something I usually kind of hold off on to give general summaries of context, but this is very important here. Robert Eggers has shown a very heavy talent as a director, and the cinematographer, Yarin Blask, helps carry a lot of the load as well. The two work together through the entire folklore trilogy, as I kind of refer to it, and their distinct style really pushes the movies above and beyond. The Witch, by comparison to the rest, is very simple, but The Lighthouse has so much detail in the visuals, even going so far as to have the whole film in black and white, shot in a tighter aspect ratio, and going as far as it possibly can to mimic the style of an old 1920s film. And The Northman has some visuals that look downright gorgeous, almost like a classical painting. Everything is symmetrical, even in motion, and there are a lot of shots and sequences that feel like they were spending hours trying to get every single thing right. I'm not even talking about the trippy psychedelic sequences. Eggers' experience as a horror director really fits the Northmen well, with some of the more out there and mystic sequences feeling like an actual nightmare. Plus the cold and matter-of-fact way he's willing to show absolute brutality. A man's nose is cut off from his face and you get a shot where the wound is shoved right in front of the camera as he tries to talk. It's unsettling, but that's the entire point. The cast all around do an amazing job as well. Alexander Skarsgård gives a career-defining performance as Amleth, a guy who just embodies a titan of rage. And some of the action scenes in the film feel downright godlike thanks to the sheer wrath he embodies as this fallen prince. The guy is a fantastic actor anyway. Also, give Generation Kill a watch if you haven't. He plays one of the main characters in that and does a great job in the show. Given the prevailing climatic conditions, using this lubricant is like trying to buttfuck a virgin underage Fuket whore with chalk. And KY is clearly called for sir. Anya Taylor-Joy is also pretty great in the film. She actually played the protagonist in The Witch, and was pretty damn great in that, though that's a very different character from who she is in Northman. There, she's just a terrified village girl trying to figure out what's going on, while in this, she's more clever and closed off. She's a Russian slave captured by the Nords who ends up running into Omleth, and sort of ends up becoming his partner in crime and eventual lover. And I'd say their relationship is pretty good. There's not a major focus on the actual romance aspect, but that's not really the point of the movie. It's about the vengeance, and not the courting, so it's not a big deal. And you do see that they clearly care for each other, and their bond helps drive a lot of events forward. The other side of the cast are the villains of the film, Nicole Kidman and Kleiss Bang, who play Queen Gudrun and Fjolnir respectively. While they are very nefarious and do some pretty awful shit to people, they actually manage to not be complete caricatures. Well, one of them isn't. Nicole Kidman's character is pretty fucking evil, even considering her circumstances, but Fjolnir ends up being a lot more complicated than just bad man who commits murder. He's not Scar but I really can't say much without spoiling major details, so we'll save that towards the end. Now, the plot of Northman, as stated, is pretty simple. Omleth loses his father, is forced to flee his kingdom, becomes a berserker viking who raids villages, then hunts down the man who ruined his life. It's not trying to be ultra-complex, it focuses on what is important. Thing is, also don't go in expecting a pulse-pounding fight scene every five minutes. It's not the raid, that's not this style of action movie. Northman is a slower-paced affair, with a lot of build-up to each 
each sequence. That's not to say there's barely any action, it has more than a few fights, just that there's a lot of thought put into the pacing. It can drive some people nuts, as Omelette says, I'm gonna ruin Fjolnir's life like three separate times, only to go off and do other stuff, but I think it's perfectly fine as it is. And the end confrontation makes all of the buildup worth it. It's legitimately epic and feels like a satisfying conclusion to the story. The whole journey just feels worth it, and that's probably the best possible compliment I can give the film. You just feel good after you watch it, because it doesn't waste your time and there's a real talent and passion put behind it. Now, I do want to get into the actual story of Northmen a bit, mainly to talk about my interpretation of some of the fantasy elements and how it impacts the plot. So, fair warning if you want to go in blind, the rest of the video is about the actual inner workings of the plot. Please give this movie a watch, you will not regret it, I'm being serious. So, the Northman goes with the idea that Scandinavian folklore is real. Viking rituals actually work, the gods are real, and mysticism actually impacts the world. And it's not all that subtle about it either. Now, this is not as in-depth as what some people will tell you. Some of the reviews coming out were saying, like, you need a master's degree in Nordic folklore to understand the plot. No, it's extremely simple what's going on. To the point that, really, you could take this exact same story and characters and apply it to any other culture. This could be a samurai movie and it would work just as well. But the point is, the magic is real. The entire reason Amleth decides to hunt down Fjolnir again after decades of just kind of doing his own thing as a Viking is because he speaks with a Cirrus, who gives him a cryptic prophecy over his fate, that his journey will intertwine with a maiden king, and then returns to him the last tear he shed during the coming-of-age ritual with his father. He also speaks with the ghost of Haymare, Willem Dafoe, who once again shows up in a cameo, but this time in a smaller role than in the lighthouse, and Haymare tells him how to acquire the magic sword Amleth is destined to kill Fjolnir with, and to get it, he must must fight a Dragor, an undead warrior, and a rite of passage to see if he is worthy of the sword. The weapon can't even be unsheathed during the day, it flat out won't leave the scabbard. There's also hints that his father Arvindul is watching over him in the form of a raven, guiding him on his journey and encouraging Amleth to seek vengeance. Now, there are a lot of revenge stories out there, and lately it's been a pretty common trope to try and subvert revenge stories by pointing out the age-old, revenge bad, message. It's pretty obnoxious when it's done terribly, and there are agonizing examples of when it's mishandled. But Northman doesn't really do this. It does address how hatred ruined Amleth's life, and how he wants to run away and start a new one with Olga, his love interest, but it never paints what he does in a fully evil light. Of course, trying to apply modern morality to a story like this can end up making you miss the point. I mean, Amleth was responsible for some pretty heinous shit in the beginning of the film, helping raid an innocent village and genocide the inhabitants. But the film makes it clear that the Amleth in the beginning threw away his honor. He fled from his responsibilities to murder Fjolnir and save his family and thus is living the bad choice road. We all make our choices. And those choices, they put us on a road. Sometimes those choices seem small, but they put you on the road. Now, it's not saying revenge good necessarily, but with this specific culture, with Vikings knowing how they were a warrior-based society, yeah, you're expected to take revenge on someone that murders your loved ones. You punish them because that is what is expected of you to do. And it's only through this, through facing his destiny, does Amleth earn redemption. Because the film makes it very clear that the gods themselves want Amleth to kill Fjolnir. Odin comes in to assist Amleth when he's captured and tortured by Fjolnir's men, along with the ravens who are implied to be the the spirit of Amleth's father literally breaking him out of jail. It's more than a suggestion, Amleth is destined to face Fjolnir at the gates of hell and kill him, which is where we dip into some interesting territory. So, in the beginning of the film, Amleth and his father perform a coming-of-age ritual to prepare him to take the throne once the king dies. Well, they're ambushed by Fjolnir and his guys, who murder Arvindol and try to kill Amleth as he runs off and escapes. Before the king is beheaded, he talks cryptically about how Fjolnir is not meant to be a king. He's a half breed bastard in his own words. But know that bearing a stolen ring makes no half-breed a king. Arvindel flat out tells him that if he tries to be a king, it will slip out of his hands. Soaked in my blood, it will soon be sliding off your arm like a serpent because he's not meant to be one. But Fjolnir tries to anyway. Well, after the intro, when Amleth is fully grown and is a berserker viking, he overhears that Fjolnir now lives in Iceland. He's confused, since he assumed that he stayed in Hrafsni after he killed Amleth's father. But his friend explains that Fjolnir's kingdom was taken away from him by the king of Norway. So now he lives in exile as a sheep farmer in Iceland. The famed butcher who served the war raven is broken down into just a sheep farmer. Fjolnir killed his brother for nothing. Now he's a sheep farmer! <laughs> 
and it all ends up for nothing. But then Amoth arrives and makes his life a living hell, killing his men, then his firstborn son, and eventually the rest of his family. And what makes it worse is when you find out the motivation behind it. It's eventually revealed that Gudrun, Arvindel's wife, schemed with Fjolnir to kill him and steal his kingdom. She never loved the king, claiming that she was just a slave he fancied and took as a wife even going so far as to claim Amleth is a product of rape, and that's why she was willing to let Fjolnir kill him as a child. Yes. You were forced upon your mother. In fact, she claims she begged him to murder his brother, and that the family they have now is one with actual love and affection behind it. Now, how much of it is real and how much of it is her trying to get into Amleth's head is unclear. We know she was a slave, since she reveals the same mark that all the others have, but whether she loved Amleth or not when he was a child is left up in the air. I wouldn't really bet on it, though. Hamir makes it very clear that Gudrun and Fjolnir were banging right in the beginning of the film. How the queen's cup grows wet for more men than her king. What metal might buy a fragrant sip? Sweet silver or hard iron? He's sort of that classic Shakespeare character archetype that showed up in some of his stories. The jester comic relief character that knows tragedy is coming, but is powerless to really stop it. You see it in Hamlet, Romeo and Juliet, King Lear, it's a thing he liked to do. The fool knew a lot more than he was saying, and sometimes he tried to stop it, but was just powerless to. And I do like the idea of a jester who knows a lot more than what he lets on. For some reason, I just think that's interesting. Seeing Willem Dafoe call his king a cuck and smack his sausage, to teaching Amleth about his role as a king, it's just such a neat contrast. But this point to an idea I kind of felt as I watched the movie. I think the tragedy is more so focused on Fjolnir than on Amleth. Yes, it's said that Amleth dies fighting Fjolnir to avenge his father and protect Olga, who reveals that she's pregnant with Amleth's children, but Fjolnir ends up losing a lot in the movie. The entire plot hinges on Amleth ruining his life, and when you learn that he did it not out of a lust of power or envy for his brother, though that element was there. Pity you never paid a bastard size heed before. Now, Behold how swiftly your brother swings his sword. He did it because he loved a woman, a very manipulative evil woman who pulled him down into darkness and cursed him. Because that's what I think the Northman is really about. Fjolnir, once he killed his brother, cursed himself and his entire bloodline to die. Scandinavian culture back then was very big on bloodlines and family, and betraying your family was seen as a major sin. Fjolnir did exactly what you shouldn't do in Nordic culture. He betrayed his brother and murdered him, and rejected his destiny. He was never meant to be a king king. Arvindel outright said it. His kingdom was torn out of his hands literally as soon as he took it because it wasn't his to have. So Fjolnir earned the wrath of the gods, who used Amleth as their weapon to punish him. And unfortunately, this also applied to his loved ones, since that was created through theft as well. Amleth murders his first son, his wife, and his young son, all before he kills Fjolnir, because he was damned to lose his bloodline thanks to his actions. He took Amleth's family, so he is doomed to lose his family as retribution. Meanwhile, Amleth's bloodline is blessed to flourish, with Olga giving birth to twins, a son and a daughter, and the daughter destined to become a queen. So you can view the Northmen as a story of divine punishment, of a man who is cursed to suffer and die thanks to his sins. And the tragedy comes down to the fact that he did it for someone he genuinely loved and cherished. Because he allowed Gudrun to manipulate him, they were both cursed. And because of that, their soldiers, their children, their land was all cursed to burn. Now that's not to say Fjolnir is completely innocent. Dude's an asshole. He was fully willing to murder a child. And you never really feel fully sympathetic for the guy. You understand his reasonings, and you see the parallels between between how he was to Amleth as a child, and how Amleth is to him as an adult. Both are a complete whirlwind that tear each other's worlds down. It's almost like a Shakespearean tragedy. Complicated characters with distinct motivations, and just bad circumstances and bad decisions forcing a confrontation. Still, I fucking love this movie. The Northman is easily one of the best to have come out in a very long time. It's a legitimate epic, and I really want you guys to sit down and watch this. Also, please give this movie money. I pirated a copy for the review, but I also bought a copy on Amazon and a physical disc, purely because I love it so much. It didn't do well in theaters, so please make sure it earns its money back. I want more movies like this. I want Robert Eggers to keep making stuff. I'm fucking begging you guys. It's a phenomenal film and you will not regret it. The soundtrack alone is worth it. Each track has so much power behind it. It's fucking beautiful. To the point I used a bunch of tracks from the movie in the Berserk Saga. I love it that much. 
Please. You guys absolutely need to sit down and watch it. I swear you will love it just as much as I do. It's just that damn good. It's a great revenge story, a fantastic character piece. The music is phenomenal. This whole thing is just a masterpiece. Check it out. Check out the rest of the Folklore Trilogy as well. They just get better and better with each entry. Until next time, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. See you guys. You know, I just realized something. That weird prophet lady Omelette talked to in the beginning of the movie? She's played by Bjork. Oh no. Victory! Hey loser, do you want a shirt? Do you want a t-shirt? I have shirts now. Look in, look in the description for a link to a t-shirt you can buy. If you don't buy the t-shirt, I'll kill your family. If you don't buy the t-shirt, I'll poison your dog. If you don't buy the t-shirt, you're gonna be the only person in town that does not have a t-shirt. Everyone's gonna look at you funny. There's gonna be social consequences to not having one of these t-shirts. I'm now making express threats of violence against you if you do not buy my t-shirt. I will call the police, tell them how they're not, you know, you're not buying my shirt. They're going to plant crack in your house, and they're going to arrest you and then beat you up in a jail cell. Buy my shirt.